It's one of the reasons that we're in this terrible place. It's one of the reasons that they, we have five cops standing on a black woman's neck in Birmingham. Because at some point they believed, they were taught and they believed that they were better than other people because they were white. It leads to a moral bankruptcy. It is inevitable. It cannot but lead there. Please, please, I can't breathe. Please, man. Please, I am. Ah, ah, ah. I uh, didn't want to see it um, for a number of reasons. But, uh, yeah, it scares me that that is something that can happen to my husband or to my son. He could have been my father. He could have been my brothers. Makes me very angry. And to know that it still happens at home, it's painful. As a country boy from West Virginia, I never thought I would see any place other than my home. So I wanted to study abroad. I liked the language, I liked the culture, and I knew I wanted to live and work here. So directly after I graduated university in New York, I moved to Japan. And I was like, yeah, like I'll give it a shot. But you know, at the time, I didn't even have a passport or anything like that. So it was, so it was definitely a big leap of faith for me. And it was mostly to try something new and to see what we can do out here. So I've been working in Japan for 24 years. I work in music and entertainment here. Olympic short track speed skating team. I'm their strength trainer. I own a restaurant with my husband and I am a food coordinator and a gospel teacher and so many other things. <laughs> uh, when I moved to Japan, I was moving to Japan. It wasn't for a visit. I was ready to leave the United States. I was ready for a change. Right. I didn't leave because I was running away from anything. I left because I felt I could be more myself in Japan. Living in Japan as an African American, I've honestly never felt more free. You know, I can do things here in Japan that I can't do back at home in the U.S. I can catch a cab when I'm not trying to catch a cab. People in stores that are supposed to serve you, serve you like they serve everybody else. We were walking and we saw this, this, this um, courtyard was open and there were plants. I was sitting on a bench. It's a little park near my house. And an old man comes up and says, oh, hey, uh, come on in. And then it was a little old lady bent over, coming down the block. And, you know, and he offers us free vegetables. And then he offers us some tomatoes. And he was just friendly and kind. And, and she passed me and I said, Kumbawa. And she looked up and she said, Kumbawa. And she put her head down and kept it moving. She didn't turn around to see if I was behind her. She didn't care. We didn't have to worry whether someone was going to call the police on us, that we were going to get shot, that we were going to get assaulted. Because we've been trained, we've been programmed uh, that people are afraid of us. But here, I really don't get that. I really don't get that. I, I feel good here. America forces us, unfortunately, sometimes to live in terror. Not just of police, but that America's the greatest country. You can only be successful here. I look at my home, I look at my family, I look at my friends, I look at my career, and I know that's a lie. <laughs> Back 
back home, I, I felt targeted. Certainly. Um, less of a person, uh, more of a threat. They get out of the car and they say, so um, they stop me. It's a really tense situation, you know, when you see this white cop coming toward you, especially if it's two. They say, where are you going? And I'm like, huh? And they tell my friend Brad, blonde haired, blue eyed, white fella, they say, we don't want you, son. Leave. I'm always extremely polite. Yes, sir. No, sir. But I feel like no matter how I act, it's up to the officer of how my life is going to go after. He's like, can I have your ID? And I'm like, sure. Uh, there was a fear there. There was a, a worry that something like that along those lines could happen to me, be, being accused of something that I didn't do. And I said, I'm giving him my Harvard student ID because maybe he'll think if something happens to me, someone will miss me. I feel intimidated. I feel scared. I feel like I need to carry myself perfectly. Two more police officers, four police officers, just for me. It makes me feel uh, powerless. And then he stands in front of me and asks me this question. He says, so what do you think about that OJ verdict? And I thought to myself, he's trying to get me to say something or to do something to provoke him into hurting me. There's no need for him to ask me that. There was no need for him to stop me. You would think that I did something terribly wrong uh, and just just the, the, the body language, the demeanor, the, the tone of his voice, just the way he spoke to me, um, it, was, it was almost demeaning. And I, I remember my mother, my mother teaching me what to say when a police officer stops you and there was nothing in my Rolodex for this. All I said to him was, I'm sorry, officer, but I don't know what you're talking about. And he looked at me and he looked at my ID and he said, hmm. well, it's just sad for everyone. And I'm like. You sort of get numb to it because it's been going on forever. Well, then it doesn't matter whether I'm doing right or wrong or whatever, um, the police are, are, are an entity to completely avoid. Gives me my ID and I proceed to cry and shake and just almost scream. I, I waited until I got to school to scream. I hadn't felt so violated since ever. Racism in America has definitely kept me in Japan for a number of reasons. My decision to stay here definitely, if, if I'm considering how I'm, I'm treated here in Japan compared to how I'm treated in America, uh, that, you know, all of that definitely play, played a big part. Yeah, I did not intend to stay for 12 years, but here I am. <laughs> I became a Japanese citizen on May 25th, 2018. Living in Japan as an African-American is an interesting experience. How Blacks or African-Americans are seen in Japan, a lot of it comes from television. And the majority of it is kind of bad. We're thugs. We're mammies. We're hoes or prostitutes. We're loud. We're angry. I've gotten very strange questions or assumptions made about me because of the fact of me being Black. But my job, and I've taken it very seriously, has been to dispel as many myths as possible. Instead of getting angry, I've, at, in the beginning, I was just kind of politely um, correcting people. Maybe you saw that on TV. It's not necessarily true. Most of the time, it breaks down. It breaks down because ignorance breaks down. So yeah, um, in Japan, it's ignorance. And that I can deal with. That I've been dealing with my whole life. Have I felt racial bias in Japan? Uh, 
it's hard to answer that question because not really. Ready? Go! Go, go, go! Both feet, same time. Fast, fast, fast! Faster! Both legs, both legs! Go, go, go! Tia is on wild. No school shit. Can go to your step. Okay, so squeeze. So, so, so. This, this is a, an extremely homogenous society. So uh, I stick out like a sore thumb as a black man. I don't feel that I've been discriminated against because I'm black. I do feel that I've been discriminated against because I'm foreign. The worst you get in this country is someone looks at you a little weird or a kid will stare at you because they've never seen a black person. Or But overall, uh, I don't feel racism here. I, I feel different, but I, I, I can't say it's racism. This is Japan's racism. It's like racism light. Like if you could, if you can bottle it up, you know, original America, Japan, light with a lemon finish. <laughs> the only difference is that when someone sees me, there's not hate in their eyes. I feel in Japan, I'm treated with respect. And um, I wouldn't have lived in Japan for 10 years <laughs> if it wasn't positive. And it's interesting because America is the land of the free. But ultimately, uh, the freedom to just live safely, that, that, feel, that feeling of, of safety, if we look at our, like our, our hierarchy of needs, that's you know, at the base level. So to feel safe, uh, to feel like I, I'm not threatened by those who are in authority, the, in, in, in authoritative positions, I think that's essential for anybody to live with peace of mind. And sometimes I like to walk around and look at the big houses and just dream. And um, when I see the police coming, I tense up, but they just say hello and keep it moving. I don't think they'd put a knee on my neck until I died. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel that way towards American police. I think they're way more aggressive. <laughs> Do I see myself going back to America? The answer to that question is no. Absolutely not. I would never consider going back to America. Being in America really was hard. I don't hear great things happening for Black people back at home. So it makes me think, maybe I am okay here. Uh, every time that I go back to the U.S. now, I feel... Um, uncomfortable. It doesn't feel like home to, to me anymore. And my son was born. And uh, of course, you had Trayvon Martin, you had just so many different things happening. Um, the answer was no. You know, I have more bandwidth to handle that in a more productive way than I would if I was in America. Moving to Japan made me very aware of the fact that I'm a black woman and I'm different from everyone here. And it made me prouder. But I began to truly love who I am in Japan. Do I feel that it's home? Not yet. I do eventually want to go back to the U.S. That's my home. Isn't that crazy? A place where I know that I'm not welcomed everywhere. Your home is home, but you got this abusive mother or father, so it doesn't feel like home. So America is, I guess, my home. That's where I was, where I'm from. But it doesn't feel like home. I can't, I'm not relaxed when I'm there, for the most part. Sad, but true. Mm -hmm.